Okay, so look, we got to address this here. All right. There's a war in Gaza. There's a war in Ukraine. Uh, heaven forbid, potential conflict with China. Conflict with Iran. Conflict everywhere. It's in, in, in the year 2024, there is only war. If you got that Warhammer 40K reference, I love you. But look, it, it's, it's clear to all of us <clears throat> that this madness has to stop or it's going to reach a point of no return, return. And the thing is, it could be argued that we already crossed that line of point of no return, that we're already probably in the early stages of World War III. And uh, when the nukes go flying, folks, just remember, I always thought you guys were the best audience ever. But before the nukes vaporize us, turns out Donald Trump himself, Donald Trump himself said something that's probably going to, you know, make the establishment angry. Now, again, I don't know if he will actually really, truly follow through with it, but it is important that we do maybe see maybe a perspective of it where Donald Trump has announced that if he wins, he will lift the sanctions on Russia and Iran. So I guess people are upset that he said that. Many liberals are upset that he said that. Do I see the wars ending under Trump? No, maybe Ukraine. I do know one thing, that if this war in Gaza was happening under Trump, there would be so many people out there protesting the streets right now. It would be ridiculous, okay? Everybody would be would be dusting off their marching shoes, their protest shoes, and protesting, especially all the big brain idiots protesting in front of Trump Tower. And, and look to, to to the activists here in Chicago. If Trump does win, like I, I get it, I'll get I'll give you one freebie pass to protest in front of Trump Tower. But if the next four years is we're gonna start somewhere in downtown Chicago that protests for Trump Tower, like shut up. Just, just shut up. God, four years of covering that. Well, not four years, basically two years. And again, I reached, I already said the story of why I stopped. But it's so, it's so, so stupid, so stupid. So here's what's triggering a lot of liberals, okay? Where Trump is saying he will lift sanctions. He, he will lift the sanctions on Russia and Iran if he does that. Do I think he'll do it? I'll let you decide. Type one for yes, Kit. Trump's going to do it. He's going to lift those sanctions. And there'll be world peace. Type 2. Well, something might happen, but there's still going to be a whole bunch of bull. It's still going to be shite. I wonder how many twos will be in the chat. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. So my specific question is, would you strengthen or modify any of these economic sanctions programs, particularly Russia, including the pipeline you mentioned? Well, it's a great question. The problem with what we have with sanctions. And I was a user of sanctions, but I put them on and take them off as quickly as possible because ultimately it kills your dollar and it kills everything the dollar represents. And we have to continue to have that be the world currency. I think it's important. I think we'd be losing a war. If we lost if we lost the dollar as, a, as the world currency, I think that would be the equivalent of losing a war. That would make us a third world country and we can't let it happen. So. I use sanctions very powerfully against countries that deserve it. And then I take them off because look, you're losing Iran, you're losing Russia. China is out there trying to get their currency to be the dominant currency as you know better than anybody. All of these things are happening. You're losing so many countries because there's so much conflict with all of these countries that you're gonna lose that and we can't lose that. So uh, I wanna use sanctions as little as possible. One now, do I do I think, do I think, do I think that he'll do something? Uh, there might be an equivalent to something like that. Maybe, may, maybe, maybe he will lift some sanctions. But there's money to be made in war. And Democrats and Republicans profit heavily from it. You know, and, and, and when I mean Democrats and Republicans, I do mean Democrats and Republicans. Hey, take, for example, in the great state of Pennsylvania. Hey, here's 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 your here's your governor, of Pennsylvania. Governor Josh Shapiro. Say it with me, folks. With none other than Zelensky himself. <laughs> Look. 
Look, look, they're autographing bombs and missiles and mortar shells and rockets and ammunitions. World War III is around the corner. Let us clap. Clap, everybody. Clap like you got the clap. Say it with me, folks. What could go wrong? Now, again, look, Trump's talking about the dollar. He's talking about the economy. But you know what profits our current economy? Ongoing forever wars. Hey, why don't we invest into our communities and to our people? How's that going to make me money? Well, it makes the people more happy and thrives, and then they'll contribute more into our consumer-based economy. No, I want the people in debt and in slavery. I want the next generation to fight my wars. Because you know what, Democrats? Your problem is this. Because again, look, it, again, so many liberals are panicking that Trump was talking about lifting sanctions off of Russia and Iran. But Democrats worry intense fighting in the Middle East could hurt Harris. Trump, Kamala, do you have a peace plan so we don't get vaporized? One says yes, the other says yes, but both the answer will say, uh, we'll, we'll t I'll tell you more when I get into office. Democrats worried that the intense fighting in the Middle East could lead to further tensions in their party, costing Vice President Kamala Harris and other Democrat candidates in the, in the process. Oh, my goodness. What could go wrong? Oh, maybe because Arab and Muslim voters aren't too excited for Kamala. That's not a controversial statement. It's a fact. The worries are twofold. Democrats say the violence, because this is violence, could leave some progressives unhappy with the Biden-Harris administration's policies resulting in these voters staying home on Election Day, which is their right. If they want to stay home on Election Day, go ahead. In the case of uh, moderates or soft, soft Republicans, soft, aw, Soft Republicans, you guys are like teddy bears, like a big old teddy bear, <laughs> who deeply care about the state of Israel. The Democrats fear it could cost Harris and their party votes to former President Donald Trump, the evil orange boogeyman. Woogie, boogie, 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 boo. The Democrats were already fractured over the ongoing conflict in Gaza. Well, well uh, excuse me. <clears throat> you, you mean the protesters outside the DNC convention? You know, people who at least are realizing that Democrats are frauds. Never, never mind. See, I'm the only one that's paying attention anymore. But as Israel launched extensive airstrikes in southern Lebanon on Monday, killing hundreds, Democrats said there is palpable fear that the rash of instability could pose trouble for Harris as she heads into the final weeks of the campaign. Well, that has to deal with Israel. It, it, Israel that owns Democratic and Republican politicians. Now, whether or not Trump can lift the sanctions or not, you know, or maybe have a peace plan, that's up in the air. But one thing's abundantly clear. This war in Gaza is still ongoing. We're still itching closer and closer to World War III. Hell, some could say we're already there already. But Democrats, you don't have a plan for peace, do you? And yet you're quick to wag the finger at Trump. But yet, correct me if I'm wrong, who is the president of these United States? Oh, that's right. Joe Biden. But oh, wait. Hold up. Is he in charge? Really? Because if I what I played on yesterday's show, turns out he wasn't having, having a meeting for the last 11 months. So who's giving the thumbs up for Israel to do this stuff in Lebanon? Who's who's doing that? I want to pull up this video here from Jimmy Dore. Shout out to Jimmy Dore's show. Representing Chicago. Israel has been blowing up uh, what they consider Hezbollah people inside Lebanon through their pagers. Now, this are is are they not Hezbollah people? This is scary for a million. Well, they're blowing up Hezbollah people, but they're also blowing up innocent people all around them. Imagine if one of those Hezbollah what? people was on a plane. Imagine no. if three of them were on a plane and they blew up all at the same time, and then the plane blew up and went down. Remember, imagine that. You have to forgive Israel for that. 
So <laughs> we'd have to all pretend it didn't happen. Like yeah. The US so this is called terrorism. What they're doing. Um. Uh, it's and a by the new phase of war, Jimmy. By the way, <laughs> this is that Lebanon is rocked by a second wave of exploding devices as Israel declares a new phase of war. It's a phase. This, oh, is, this is a phase where we are going to have to be dragged in because now they're going to retaliate on Israel a lot, and then we're going to have to save our aircraft carrier in the Middle East. So this is the is phase. This is? this is the phase we realize that Israel are full blown terrorists, and they can blow up your phone if they want. They already tapped into my phone using pegasus and my computer they already did that so they can get into my i'm sure they can get in and blow it up if they want so just in case you don't know what the story is walkie talkies and solar equipment exploded in beirut and multiple parts of lebanon on wednesday in an apparent second wave of attacks targeting electronic devices a day after hundreds of pagers used by hezbollah blew up so they're not stopping with this. So what they're doing is they're terrorizing. So they're terrorizing regular people. That's called terror. They're using violence against innocent civilians for a political gain. So people's are they're blowing up at grocery stores. They're blowing up in taxi cabs. They're blowing up on street corners. They're blowing up in uh, every, every anywhere and everywhere. They're the most moral army in the world, Jimmy. I won't hear of this. <laughs> Continuing on with this article, right now she's in the worst spot, said one Democratic strategist who has worked on recent presidential campaigns. She can't undercut Biden's policy, but she also has to not upset the balance of her coalition. What coalition do you have? By the way, uncommitted, uncommitted, uncommitted. I need you to sit down for a minute. What's wrong with your leadership? You guys are crawling back to the Democrats. You do realize she's not. Well, Biden is president of the United States, but you do realize. And, and, I, and, I, and I hope you understand this, that, you know, they're not going to take your feelings into consideration. Uncommitted is committed to Democrats. But yet the Democrats panic when Trump says he wants to lift sanctions off of Russia and Iran. Now, again, what does that look like? Because he was saying itself, oh yeah, I put sanctions on, then I didn't lift, put, then I lifted them. Ordered some airstrikes, then I made sure we didn't do any more airstrikes. So Trump is all in, then all out. Pull in, pull out. No pun intended. <clears throat> there are folks who think she's not doing enough to help Israel. And then there's the other side who thinks she's not doing enough to help the situation in Gaza. She's in a lose-lose situation, which uh, I have to say, you know, Maybe the Democrats are just hedging their bets 50-50. If Kamala wins, the party goes on. If she loses, they wait till 2028 to restart the party all over again. Trump's, perhaps sensing an opening in recent days, sought to pounce on the opportunity, saying that he is the only candidate in the race who is supportive of Israel. Well, what a surprise there. Oh, Trump's supportive of Israel. Hey, you think, you think Trump's going to put any sanctions on Israel? No. No bueno. He goes on to say, if I don't win this election and Jewish people would have a lot to wit do with that, 60% are voting for the enemy. Israel will cease to exist in two years. That's not going to happen, okay? Trump said last week at the Israeli-American Council Conference in Washington, I believe I'm 100% right. Oh, really? You're 100% right? Always, all the time? If I do win, <laughs> Israel will be safe and secure and will stop the toxic poison of anti-Semitism. During the presidential debate earlier this month, the former president also took aim at Harris for not supporting Israel and trying to have it both ways. Why am I why am I thinking that quote from Marlo from The Wire? You want it one way, but it's really the other way. So what can we take from this? Well, we, we still have these forever wars ongoing. We still have, again, crisis, mass instability. If, 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 if you are not upset about the current situation right now impacting the people, what, what, what more do you need? What more proof do you need to see that we are living in some very, very insecure times? I mean, our economy is struggling, yet somehow we got billions of dollars for these wars. As soon as you have a candidate, and again, each of these candidates say whatever they want on a campaign trail, that they'll lift sanctions, well, that's going to cause mass panic. But do you want to know what's not causing mass panic? 
the massacre of men, women, and children in Gaza, in Lebanon, all over, in order to benefit the top 1% who are profiting off of wars. How will this all end? Well, it won't matter who's president, because you do realize that no matter who sits on the throne, the wars will be ongoing. 